Yep, recording started. So in your role as a manager or leader, list and explain three, um, three, three, three behaviors, inclusive behaviors you would demonstrate in a workplace in order to promote the diversity. So to recall your memory, what is inclusive behavior is you include everyone. Right. So, for example, if I'm talking to someone in the language which is not understood by majority of the candidate in a classroom, then it's an exclusion. I have to talk in a way that everyone understands. Right. No private gossiping. Otherwise, I'm kind of promoting favorism um, in a language like English, which is widely understood by everyone. And, you know, so what you will do to promote or demonstrate, um, you know, you would demonstrate in a workplace to promote diversity. So talk in a language that everyone understand, you know, um, also any communication or strategies that helps everyone involve everyone equally, not to favor someone, no personal gossiping, um, respect in the communication and a couple of other things which we already seen in the slide as well. Yeah, so you can add things like that to support your response. Right. List five barriers to inclusive that could be encountered and need to be overcome in order to support, right? Um, number one, the biggest barrier is a policy. Policy supports as well, but if the policy is not on track, it can be biggest obstacle as well. And that needs to be amended. And that's why you need to review the workplace policy. Okay. Number one. Um, next could be the working environment, right? If there are someone, you know, like groupism, then you need to break those barriers. Tell everyone that, oh, this is not professional. This is not all right. It's against our policy. And that's why policy is a first step, yeah? Um, next is a work house. Sometimes you wanted to include everyone, but because of work hours, like many business operate 24 seven, 24 hours, seven days, like fuel station, for example, here. Um, another one is call centers. You know, when you go online and want to check to some banking expert or someone, they might feel like, oh, we are available whenever you want to talk, give a call, helpline numbers, you know, fire, Police, so many department, medical, medical department, right? They are working longer hours. So even if you wanted to include some members who is on a night shift, you can't because you are in a morning shift, right? So unless you um, talk about some common event, go to a party or a movie night, um, you know, arrange some alternative or like Christmas party, right? So during Christmas party, everyone is included irrespective of the shift and someone else is taking care of the counter or shift, yeah? Um, one, one, one person will be left behind, but everyone else can be included, yeah? You think about more factors like this and how do you overcome, right? How would you address each of these five barriers? Okay, so here you are listing them and here you are overcoming them. So like I already said that, you know, a policy, right? Your policy need to include all the LGBTI, like lesbian, gay, transgender, and, um, you know, uh, all such communities. Uh, it's already a legislation, so your company need to accommodate those as well. Then work hours. Um, go for some common parties to reduce any personal barrier. Yeah. How would you address each of the five barriers which you already listed in here to improve inclusions? Explain how would you, this is already covered, like I said, yeah. explain how you would adjust your communication style to specifically target diverse needs of each of the following in individual. Provide two adjustment that you would make for each individual. Use the table below to record your response. Person with English as a second language, what would you do? Talk in a simple English language. If English is not your first language, then you should talk in a language that is widely understood. Don't use any jargons like technical words, 
not too many acronyms, right? Um, speak slowly at a moderate pace, you know, use the new body language, like, you know, so this is what I'm saying. So you're saying, oh, no, no, don't do that. So even if the word doesn't make sense, my action will make sense, yeah? Um, so more body language, gestures that you use, you know, um, face to face is always better than remote or a telephone. Yeah, if you are in that community. Next is employee who has a hearing impairment. Provide them with tele, um, you know, uh, proper equipment like hearing aids, you know, or a headphone like this noise cancellation hand, um, headphone or you know, um, you can use writings if they're having hearing impact, hear impairment, um, clarity and a pace of space a you can speak really slow enough so they absorb every word you say. Take some pauses. The moment you take pauses, they become alert and they will absorb or analyze the information you have provided. And different cultural background, you know, what will be that one different cultural background, you know? So any stories that you share, you know, should be covering those. So for example, if I'm coming there and if I only keep talking about um, Australia or India, then you won't, we won't be able to mingle well. So I need to be adopted to what you guys feel, yeah? Um, what is right? How do I pay respect to elderly person in Solomon? If at all, that's a custom, you know? Um, going for prayers, before lunch, before you go for a ceremony or a meeting, you know, something like that. It's also considered a part of, so I need to really adjust as per the culture. Like I already said earlier, if I have a Muslim um, candidate, then I need to allow them time for their prayer. Yeah. So this is all cultural, different person. Okay. Give some example, give some adjustment that you will do. Five resources to help you facilitate. Oh, it's so big. Right. Five resources to help facilitate effective communication in the workplace. Remember, we talk about newsletter, website, um, right? Any translation software, um, any other material, intranet. And at that time, I talked about this one. Okay, this is live. You can click on that link. Let me show you now. And it's working well. Yeah. Okay. I'll upload the part two once we are done here. Yeah. So if you talk about newsletter, how newsletter support um, communication, you know, so you can talk about some stats there. Uh, that this is what we are doing. This is what diversity has helped us, right? Any booklet, any material large phone, small phone, all that thing, yeah? Okay, any questions up till 15, from 11 to 15? If anyone wants me to go back to anything or explain, happy to do that. Is everyone happy? Oh, that's good. <laughs> Thank you, Julius. Happy is my kid's uh, favorite word. It's happy, happy, happy. Sorry, I'll be mentioning about my kid because I love him like anyone. Um, so ignore that part. Yeah, if I say too much. Right. So everyone is good. That's awesome. Let's continue. I only have a few, three scenarios to run through. And then I'll give your brain or yourself a bit of time. Again, you can have coffee or, you know, uh, discuss the question. I simply encourage you guys to create a group, which you will be creating anyway for the role plays, because some of them will be done in a team setting and discuss this. So if I was in that classroom as a candidate, as a student, I will pick up some person. So for example, I'll pick up Casper. Hey, Casper, what do you think of this? I forgot what Dushan said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or I go to Joseph, or I go to Julius, and hey, Joseph, Julian, what do you think of this? Uh, you know, employee who has a hearing impairment, how would you take care of it? 
I don't really have to jot down every word they are saying, otherwise it's a copy and paste. That's not the intention, but discuss. The more you discuss, someone will, um, that's that's what we are learning, diverse audience. Yeah, so all of you might be from a different, someone telecom, someone ministry, someone accountant, someone education sector, a local church activity, right? That is the thing, that is a core, yeah? And that's why I will give you some time to discuss and um, you know make some notes so you can prepare the assessment quickly, fairly quickly. Okay. Now, read this information. Is a case study is a part B of the task. Read this info. Make sense? Let me read that for you. You are a manager. You work as a manager at a community-based organization. It is situated in a semi-rural community with a high aboriginal population, which is the original people of Australia. Yeah. Um, many families are related to each other because it's a small, neat, uh, close-knit community. There are a large number of families that live in poverty and with this comes a number of issues. We know that very well. You have a colleague who is local Aboriginal man, Uncle Bob Smith. Bob Smith's family members are traditional loan, landowners and has a wealth of knowledge about local area and the people. That's him. That's Bob. Yeah. Uncle Bob is absent from work sometimes as he is a community leader and as a responsibility, which often impacts his ability to be at the office. You know, they might be helping someone with the farm or take care of some, you know, uh, cattle, um, a cow, or, you know, healing someone. Um, helping with the building roof and things like that, you know? So he can't be at the office, obviously. Community members look for him during the day to help with the things that, are, you know, all that thing. Um, you often hear other work colleagues complaining about this and commenting on how much work both misses. So if both miss the work, someone else is doing the work. So it increases the work on the other people, which is true, right? At a work is my party uncle board over here is to employee complaining about him being lazy and having a bad work ethics. So you don't reach work at time. I know Uncle Bob has some work commitment, but what does it have to do with everyone else? Right? Either you fulfill the commitment, don't worry about the work, or if you do the work, do it with integrity. That's what the other people are talking. This is a situation. You are the manager. This is Uncle Bob and the other employee, right? Answer the following question in relation to the above scenario. What are the three issues, challenges that you identify in this one, in the scenario? Number one, communication gap. Yeah, that Uncle Bob is very busy. He is helping so many people. Not everyone is aware of that fact. So if that was been told clearly, then this issue wouldn't have arise. Other colleagues won't complain because two more of them might need some help. Yeah. What other issues? Anyone saw that? Anyone?
you know, the Uncle Bob is working too much, you know, and there's not enough resources, right? And that's why dual commitment, yep, yeah, it's all work, that's true, yeah. Um, training is needed, you know, so no one should blame Uncle Bob because he's doing more than what he can, what he should, you know. And still, if people complain, then he might feel bad as well that oh, I'm doing so much for my community, but no one respect my commitment. You know, he must be sacrificing his family time, his job hours, and that get maybe get less pay. We don't know all that thing, right? Yeah, so you can talk about three issue or challenge that you have identified in the scenario. Next. As Bob's manager, what are two strategies that you can implement to support him and create an inclusive workplace for the organization? What will you do to support him? Awesome, awesome, well done. Draw up a work plan. You know, tell everyone that Uncle Bob is busy. So maybe I will revise his job description and include some community lives and time. Because you are already a community company, isn't it? Company in the organization. Your job is to, yes, work flexibility. Well done, awesome, yeah. Very good. Yeah, create some ad hoc staff as well. So if Uncle Bob says, oh, sorry, I'll have to take care of this elderly person who needs medication and he has to be taken from the remote well, yeah, to some another urban center, which is about two hours drive, has to take care of him. You need to have some ad hoc staff. You can call him. No props, Uncle Bob. You can go ahead and help that fellow. I will make sure whatever was your plan to do today will be taken care by uh, for example, Jacqueline or Julius or, you know, uh, Soraya, right? So some ad hoc person. So as a manager, I would call Soraya. Hey, Soraya, would you like to cover uh, today uh, because Bob is busy? And that will, uh, Soraya will say, yeah, of course, he's get, she's getting paid, you know, um, getting an opportunity to learn. So some really not too much dedicated person, like not too occupied person, but someone ad hoc staff who can replace Bob's work commitment on that particular day. Yeah, so that's another strategy I could do. Yeah. Makes sense. So what you guys say is awesome. Awesome. Well done. Communicate about the situation to them. Well done. Yeah, you're telling everyone that, oh, Bob, Bob, whatever Bob is doing, Uncle Bob is doing is for us. It's for the community, for the betterment of the community. It's a wealth to the team and blah, 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 whatever you want to add. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And once the payment is in, all half of your complaint will be gone. I'm telling you, we only complain if we are doing extra work with the same amount of pay. The moment we are paid with the overtime, is all right. You know, it's not that everyone will be happy with that, but it will solve most of your problem. Yeah, great job, great job. How can your organization support Uncle Bob in his role as a traditional owner? I mean, some of this, what you did, work flexibility, develop a plan can come here as well. You know, you can also, like what I said, you know, train and hire some of the part-timers, you know, um, how they can support, you know, um, invest in local technology. So Bob doesn't have to, uh, you know, be at all the places. Give him some really good, um, you know, access to technology or um, it could be easy to access vehicles or some smart laptops or touch phones or whatever, you know, tablet things so he can work most of the things via, you know, or give him a driver. So while he's coming to the community center, he's using this half an hour, one hour to really wind up many of the things, right? I would love to do that, you know. Um, during my commit time, if I'm not driving, if I'm using public transport, I would just sit back in the corner, take my laptop and mark up some of the things, like to do things, reading emails or reading some article, responding to some clients, students, you know, so that way 
um, when I am at the premise, when I'm at the office, I don't have to worry about those things and it's done in timely manner, yeah? Next, what type of education and training can you suggest for your staff trips around two education strategies? Any insight on that? Very good time management work skill. Yep, yep. What in terms of diversity? Can you think of something in terms of, yes, in our training of skilling? Yeah. Something in terms of diversity. Educate staff about diversity, professional development, right? Bullying and harassment. Those staff member at a party would have talked about Uncle Pop, maybe in offensive way. We need to tell him that without you knowing the, all the fact, it's not professional that you bully someone or harass someone, yeah? Relation building skills as well. Empathetic behavior as well. Emotional intelligence development as well. There are so many fancy words or training you can add. Yeah, what is mentioned here, well done. Cultural awareness as well. Maybe those staff members are new to the community center, don't know the wealth that Uncle Bob's family has been carrying for generation and how they are helping. Yeah, well done guys, thank you. So hope these four questions are clear. Doesn't need any further explanation. Can we move to case study two? If anything is not clear, just write in your chat or unmute and say it. Yeah. Right, read this block. Case study two. Um, Okay, so Anna is employed by a Commonwealth department, like a government department here, in a client service position. She states that the department has a policy that to block the emails containing particular word as and as profanities. Anna said the word lesbians is on the list and an email sent to her containing this word has been blocked. So anything that you find offensive is being blocked, like an incoming filter that goes in your spam folder, you get a notification, hey, we have blocked this email. Would you like us to release this? Right? APT has the same policy. TAFE has the same policy. Many government organizations have the same policy. Right? She complained that as a lesbian, she is herself lesbian. She is offended by the inclusion of this word on the list. The moment you block something, that means it is not respected widely. She is in that category and she feels offended. Oh, this has been blocked. That means you don't respect who am I? Who I am? Yeah, the department noted the world has been this on a list of block because the employee were receiving inappropriate spam email which include this word. So from the government department, they blocked everything including this word, right? Kind of fair enough. As an app manager, she has also discussed with you how comments were made in the uh, staff room about her two children and how they would be disadvantaged going up with the same sex parents, okay? So this is the situation. She's working in a government department. All the emails containing lesbian work has been blocked. She feels offended about it and has raised some concern, you know, that uh, it should be blocked. The department has an explanation that is on a block list word because employee were receiving inappropriate spam email, which included this word, right? Um, so as I manager, she also discussed where, you know, um, staff member were commenting about her two children, how they were brought and what disadvantage kids might have if they are living with, um, you know, uh, same-sex parents. Yeah, I would say it that way. Okay. Now, 
Question number one, research the following to assist in answering the following question. Australian Commission, Human Rights, Sexual Orientation, Gender Identity and Intersex Status Commission. Let me, let's see if the control, it's something that doesn't work for me, I don't know why. Oh, it worked, right. right. I will share that with everyone. So I'm not doing that now, but that has some, you know, a PDF Word document, PDF will download, Word will, I think PDF will be open in the next tab, but a Word will download on your local system. Yeah, we read about this, what it takes about, what discrimination is not unlawful, what is lawful, what is unlawful, all that thing, yeah. Right. Now, what you are doing is explain how NI is experiencing discrimination, both directly and indirectly, 100 to 150 words. So you are rewriting the scenario, what you feel NI feels discrimination, that block of the email, you know, and about comments about the same sex parent. Yeah. So this is... Um, as a discrimination, you are excluding all these people, yeah, which is not lawful. What legislation are not being complied? So, first of all, human right, you are violating someone's basic human right, yeah. Anti discrimination is another one, yeah. Um, anti bullying, anti harassment is another one you can talk about, right. Um, yeah, I think this is this again. Human rights, um, anti-discrimination, anti-bullying. Um, then you are talking about let us say LGBTA laws and everything. Yeah, that you are not uh, compiling. Yeah. As an NS manager, you are legally responsible if discrimination harassment is experienced by her. Is asking you, are you legally responsible, right, for this? If so, under what legislation? As an ad manager, are you legally responsible? Yes, you are. That's the job of a manager to manage the employee. Yeah, to take care of the people. If someone is feeling threatened, discriminated, you should raise it. If you can solve it your end, good. If you can't raise it to a child, raise it to the higher management. But that's your job. That's what you should be doing, right? Um, it's basic discrimination act, we can say, you know with which you can raise the concern and create an environment when everyone feels safe to work with, right? It's, you can also classify WHS because um, health and safety not always necessarily be physical, mental safety as well, you know? Would you like to work in an environment where everyone is judging you, passing some comments about you, you know? Oh, he's very poor fella, or he's very obese, or he's very skinny, you know? Uh, malnutrition, person or something, then you won't feel good to work in that team, isn't it? Yeah. So it's also that that it's your um, legal responsibility to ensure that the workplace is safe. Any concern with first question? Okay. As an as manager, what action would you take to elevate discrimination? List three actions. What would you do as a manager to solve this situation? Anyone?
Well done. Excellent. Thank you. Digital policy interview. Excellent. You guys are great. And provide some literature on the inclusive behavior, isn't it? Because everyone kind of excluded Anna. So the inclusive behavior has to be adopted. Yeah, for the help of the department. Any laws that has to be implemented or at least made everyone aware of that, oh, this is illegal. You can't do that, you know? And trust me, this is a first warning, then I won't be able to help you. You know, something like that. You can ask them to review a piece of paper and ask them to read that here. Yeah? Well done to all the person who has responded. Okay. This is a PDF file. LGBT inclusive practice audit tool for the health and human service organization, you know, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and intersex, right? Does it open tick all the boxes, you know? And then what is it? Who has done it? You know, developing inclusive approach, tips for getting most of the audit, this and that. I mean, this is good information, but obviously I'm not reading it word by word. And that's why I shared in chat, by all means, save it put it in your email. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a good uh, heap of instructions here. Read it, yeah? Right, what do we got here? Identify five areas of organization policy that you would need to revise. What are the five policy you would need to revise? You can refer to the standards or indicator from here. I mean, not necessarily that you have to answer it now, but you can talk about any specific resources, right? Any staff position addressing any concern, any discriminatory policy, you know, any confidentiality policy, any privacy policy, um, with any reference to the sexual orientation that if that needs to be revised here. Yeah? Keep it very accessible. Keep the documents very accessible. Um, any prompt action, if that's required, do it as don't leave it behind. Don't wait for that to improve. And HR policy and procedure of the same six partner. Yeah. Five areas of staff knowledge, skills, and confidence you would like to focus on. Right? Again, any direct support, awareness about it, distributing any literature, you know. Uh, staff is confident about LGBTI policy, again, any resources, uh, send them for any PD, ask them to defer any relevant legislation along with other things. Yeah. Any questions? Case B. Case okay. three. Nadia re entering the workforce. So please read this part.
second. Let me finish up the riddle. Nadia re-entering workforce. So as the title says, she wants to resume the work after a certain break. Yeah. When her youngest child reached the age end of secondary school, Nadia decided it was time to take on a new challenge and re-enter the workforce. You know, so she's done with her all the responsibility. I left school at 15, worked for a couple of years, got married, then spent time uh, next part of my life traveling with my husband's work. You know, she said, I have no work experience to speak of, although after raising three children in three different countries, I felt I have very strong political and skill, which is fair enough. Raising three children, different countries, this, you know, it's, it's a challenging job, yeah? Nadia enrolled in returning to work course as a local TAFE, which supported her refresher general work skill and helped build her confidence. My major concern was going to an organization looking as though I didn't know anything. If someone said to me, go and write up a report for this one, could I do it? This was a really scary thing. You know? I was lucky, however, because I got a job as a result of my work experience placement, which was a huge force for my confidence. After a year working on a casual, Nadia applied for a full-time case manager's position. Huh? She wants to come back to work. She opted for a course. So her main thing was a confidence and not dealing with things, you know, but she worked very well and she was offered, um, has applied for a case manager's position. Yeah, she has done really well. Yeah, that's a big reason. Answer the following, how many we got? Just four questions. As the manager, how could you make the transition into full-time work more manageable for Nadia? Provide three strategies. She's been away from work for such a long period. How would you help her settle down quickly? Any hints, thoughts? Anyway, provide training, well done. Give her less work initially. Yes, good. Refresh your training, yep. To assign a supervisor, yep. Explain her um, everything, you know. Give a bit of flexibility of timing, if possible, you know. Um, Then, reviewing of any policy procedure, you can always set that sentence with almost everything. Delegate some manager responsibility, yep, right? And job is evenly distributed. So no one gets a burn out, yeah? Provide for her. Awesome, awesome. Well done, guys. Well done, well done. That more than three. We got almost five. Four, five, what are we saying? Okay. Provide three benefits to your organization by having Nadia and other mature workers for your working. Anyone, the benefits that Nadia will bring if you are working, uh, if you are setting up some work for her. Yeah, why would you have to include Nadia in the work? Anyone? Yeah. Productivity experience. Nadia has already raised three kids, so it's a good scale, honestly. Yeah, uh, reliable and mature, excellent. Having their experience, well done, well done. Yep, mature again, thank you. Yep, good work ethics, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, Modesta, thank you. Modesta, thank you. Oh, 
older worker are more stable. You know, they won't fluctuate the jobs too often. Yeah, as leadership's quality. Yeah, well said. And they're not too much busy about the pay and everything. You know, they just want to be busy. What they will do sitting at home. Even the younger kid has gone to secondary school. So she's like, you know, what would I do, you know? So they take things very seriously, work very seriously, and doesn't really matter about, you know, pay. You can say, I just pay you 16, you know, okay? Yeah. Yes, well said, guys. Thank you. If you, as a manager, change the work starting us from nine to eight without consultation, how may this affect Nadia and other team members who have family and a work commitment? Is this considered discriminatory? Is this a part of discrimination? What do you think? That's good. How oh, that would affect, yes, thank you. How oh, that would affect, it would be unfair to do it, but yes, it's very true. Yeah. Nadia might have some other work, you know, if nothing, she might want to go to a gym class or a yoga class, right? And why would you change the time without consulting? You know, you can just say that, oh, this is your usual working hours, but I wanted to change it to this time. Would you be happy with that? Would you be able to accommodate that? And then it's considered good, yeah? Right, and finally, explain two ways in which Natia may directly, indirectly discriminate against uh, due to her age. Anyone? Two ways can be directly indirectly discriminated. Yep. Technology and qualified and new graduates, different in the qualification. Yep. yep. But no, we are talking about how it can be discriminated. So when you say technology, how it can be discriminated? Because you are just not writing, you are explaining. Yeah. She was directly discriminated um, against the age. Denied promotion to manager. Yep, that's right. Um, yeah, because of age, she was under discrimination because other people were, you know, not. Uh, the manager wasn't very friendly. Oh, why would old people have to worry about anything? They are almost retired and things like that. Yes. What is indirect? Anyone? Denied a promotion? Yes. That's right. right. Not fairly. Yep. Thank you. Directly denied a person. Yep. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's more than two. Thank you. And just explain them, yeah. Any question, concern of what we have done? Anyone got any question? If not, this is the end of the first one. Yeah, start writing your responses. Like, start reading. I have given all the required material. 
um, the task one, the learners guide, the PPT, everything is shared with you. Yes. So don't worry about it. And I'll just open that from the chat window before you go. And then, you know, uh, yeah, then you can uh, start responding. I will stop the recording.